Hey there. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Deflating and Escaping Atheism. My name is Max Kolbe, and with me, as usual, is uh, Deflating Atheism, aka Rob. And uh, we've been away for a couple weeks, but we're back. And uh, how you doing this week, Rob? I'm all right. I'm back. A uh, uh, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed Franz. So, so I, I hope you'll appreciate that. You know, we were talking about possibly taking down uh, or taking apart. We got a request to look at a video by a former Scientologist, now atheist. What was that guy's name? I, I can't remember, honestly. Um, okay, it's so, somebody asked us to do it. And it's an hour-long video, and, and, and we're just talking about this now. But one of the things that sucks about this kind of stuff is we don't like watching atheist videos. We really... <laughs> We don't, actually. I don't. I mean, um, I, I don't know anybody who does like watching atheist videos, except, of course, atheists. and Naturally, yeah. You know, young fools who are, are, are sucked in by their, their bullshit. Um, but uh, 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 honestly, if people have suggestions for videos, we're thinking about actually... Uh, Rob argues for $20. I, I argue something a little higher. But uh, if someone <laughs> PayPals us money, like yeah. 20 bucks or better to take down a video, then we're going to be more interested in looking at it, only because there's so much atheist stupid out there, and how much of it can you wade through? And what I'd also say to the guy who wanted us to go for the ex-Scientologist, which I'm happy that to was me. That, that was my suggestion, but a, another guy wanted me wanted us to do a video on Professor Stick. Okay, but, but my thing on anything like that will be, tell us the parts of the video you that are really important to you, because I'm, you know, taking down an hour-long video would take six hours, probably, yeah. you know. Exactly. Um, uh, it takes us an hour to get through a five minute video <laughs> sometimes. But if you got one and you want some specific part, let us know. And yeah, we take PayPal tips for that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I mean, there's that, but this week we got a little present and an old, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't call him a compatriot. Exactly. He sort of was roughly a compatriot of mine at one time. Sargon of a cod. AKA Carl Benjamin. Now somebody, some people are going to whine and say, I just doxed him somehow by using his real name. <laughs> No, I'll tell you a little story, but first I'll show you what, what old Carl here has claimed in a tweet which has hundreds of retweets. His claims, his faith claims, by the way, his religious yeah. beliefs, that's all these are. They're certainly not evidence-based. Um, there is no God. There is no prophet. There is no afterlife. There is no salvation. There is no excuse. Now, we're going to pull apart these, but I'm just going to give an intro here as to, you know, how do I know old Sargon here? Um, because when I was editor at A Voice for Men doing men's rights advocacy work, under the name Dean, by the way, um, I published a lot of his videos. And we used to promote him heavily because we really liked a lot of his work, uh, taking apart some of the worst anti-feminist excesses, excess, you know, the, the worst excesses of feminism and social justice um, uh, politics. Um, and he, he, he's brilliant at it. It's a trait that he shares with uh, Dr. Phil Mason, Thunderfoot. Um, and there was a year and a half ago, two years ago, a reporter, Martin Daubney from the UK, contacted me and asked for credible young, newer voices criticizing feminism. And Sargon's one of the people I recommended, along with Teal Deer and, and David Sherratt, the Spinosaurus. Um, and, uh, they got famous from that, including getting their real names out there in, in the public press in the UK. Um, I'm not saying I'm the reason they got that, but, you know, I was a big player in, in the, in their, uh, success, whether they acknowledge it or not. Plus Sargon came out of something called Gamergate, which I was extremely involved in from day one. Had a lot of people try to, uh, distance themselves from me, either because I did men's and boys advocacy like the Honey Badger Brigade does, or just because they didn't like religious people, but I just wouldn't go away. Um, Sargon, I remember him when he had uh, uh, maybe a thousand or fewer subscribers. Uh, uh, and then he turned nasty. And Sargon especially has a hate boner for Catholics. Let's be real clear that this man is a bigot and yes. a hateful, uninformed one. Okay, he and I'm going to leave a challenge out here for him right now. If he's if he's man enough to listen to this and accept the challenge, go watch my interview with Professor Borden Painter, sir. Uh, so I'm going to have a can or Armored Skeptic or TJ Kirk or any of them in your little click um, or any of your follows. Go watch those interviews, and I dare you to get the book and read it, and then come back to me and continue to be a defender 
of pseudoscientists, pseudoscholars like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris. I dare you to read it, I dare you to review it, and I dare you to do it, and I mean you, Carl, not one of your uh, atheist buddies who reassures you that you don't have to look at things. Yeah. Uh, even, uh, and I'll give, I'll give another example of one of his little cronies, a guy goes by name Datnofact or something like that on Twitter, and a, uh, an obviously slightly autistic engineer type who makes pronouncements on science he cannot possibly back up and then calls anybody who, who disagrees with him irrational. He actually, that man lied about my video on proof from, of God from science, and he lies and says preposterous things like, science has explained the laws of physics just fine. Yeah. And he, um, which is a lie. And, and Illogical, it, which is illogical. It is, it is. But it's the kind of faith statements they make, and they make them dogmatically as if they can prove them or if they've, if, if they've already been proven, and it's not so. So, that was me doing a lot of talking, and I'm going to let Rob do from here. Uh, Sargon, I believe, is definitely one of those who, in the Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris orbit, likes to claim atheism is merely lack of belief. And yes. he would believe in God if he was given proof. I believe he's one of those, but maybe this marks a turn. He says there is no God. What do you think of that, Rob? <laughs> Show us proof. Yeah. Uh, simple, simple uh, uh, bald, evidence-free claims are not good enough for that's right. I'm going to put this out there right now. God is a rational conclusion based on evidence, scientific, logical, and personal experientially. It's all there. Yes. The only even thing that if, huh? Even if all a person has, and neither you or I, neither you nor I adopt this position, even if all one has is personal experience, that would still trump a lack of evidence that God does not exist. So you can't just tell us God does not exist. You can't just tell us that there is no evidence for God. Those are, as you say, faith statements. No, they really are. And 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 the and the, and the, the dodge they will, that he will probably use if he's if he keeps being a dishonest, typical atheist is is uh, well, well. But it's not proof of your God, and then that's like you're you're not even an honest dealer when you make that claim, are you? Yeah, well, proof that it's your God, proof that it's from the Bible or whatever. That is an, a dishonest dodge every time you use it. Yes. Um, because God is universally understood and has been understood. We got records going back about 9,000 years before there was any Jew in any book of Genesis talking yeah. about the basic God idea. We got the great, uh, these, they were African philosophers. Uh, yeah, they African Bantu. Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, and then we had the Greeks hundreds of years before Christ reasoned their way to God. Uh, the definition of God is the thing that's responsible for reality and keeps it running. There you go. And most philosophers get this. You can look at this. You can look this up in the dictionary. You can look it up in the Stanford Dictionary of Philosophy. There's a short definition, the thing responsible for and running the universe. Yes. Uh, you can even argue over whether it's intelligent or not. Um, Christians and most religious agree it has to have some level of, it has to be intelligent. Even non-Christian non philosophers will say, well, something like intelligence has to exist in this supreme thing that's making existence be here. Yes. These are yes. rational conclusions that rational and scientific-minded people can conclude. Yes. And it would be nice if he would acknowledge that rational and scientific people can conclude this based on the evidence, wouldn't it? Um, so, but he says there's none. I ought to say there's no God. Which God is there not? Because I'll actually tell you right now, um, on the Escaping Atheism team, which has seven people on it now, I believe, we include a, a pagan who's not Christian at all, and he's sometimes critical of Christianity, especially fundamentalist Christianity. Um, we, we, we work with and, and, and have a lot of fun dealing with agnostics like the ethical skeptic. There's a Hindu we talk to is great to talk to. Um, we talk to philosophical theists all the time who are not Christians, who still can't stand the atheism and yeah. can tell you what's wrong with it. Yes. Um, so that, 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 that's, I mean, that's the embarrassing thing for atheists. It, it, it's such a bad look because I've had discussions with pagans uh, on YouTube who were, who were ferociously intelligent, but it's always the atheists who come off looking like knuckleheads. Well, do me a favor, when we're done, refer me to one or two of them, because I want to interview one of them, especially if any of them are ex-atheists, because um, I'm real open to that. I'm hoping to get some Orthodox Jews and Buddhists on, too. But anyway, okay, so he's made a, a knowledge claim. He's made a faith claim. There is no God. So what can we conclude from the there is no God um, idea? Well, uh, he will almost certainly think the universe is random. 
he will almost certainly think that intelligent life is uh, a result of purely evolutionary processes and nothing else. Yes. Um, uh, he will almost certainly, well, what's next? There is no profit. How do we examine the there is no profit statement? I don't know what to do with that one exactly. Well, this is, this is I, I, I think we, we can make an educated guess here is that he is, he is making a reference to the uh, terror attacks in, 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 in London. Hmm. That, that, were, that, were, that were motivated by Islam. It could be. Um, I'm one of those who will actually say about Christians when he when he when he says there is no prophet. Well, unfortunately, he's he is uh, already broad brushing everyone. Yeah. And frankly, Carl, I find the claims of of, of Muslims uh, much more believable than I find the claims you make here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I would trust a Muslim because I know some Muslims. I would trust them more than most atheists that I. know. No, because uh, atheists make faith claims like this, and then they can't back them up, and yet they pretend they're the smartest people in the universe anyway, and that they're allowed to talk to everybody else like inferiors, or like, as I like to say, the N-word. They, they treat us like we're their servants. We treat us like we're mental incompetence, and they think that at some point we're not going to push back on that. Yes. Well, fuck you, Car Carl. You're a bigot, and you're an ignorant asshole, and you well, don't know what you're talking about. He's actually getting a, a fair amount of pushback just on this tweet. It, it, uh, is he? When we scroll down, yes. Well, let's look a look here, too. He's got 514 retweets and 1,980 likes. One of the things I'm going to put out there right now is that he, um, I, I, I want to see him deny it. Carl Benjamin, there is a network of atheists and so-called skeptics who, for cash, will trash people online. Yes. And harass them. What do you know about it? I think you know a lot. And you know why I think you know a lot? Well, I got more than one reason, including sources I won't divulge. But uh, you, you accept money from TJ Kirk. That's enough to believe that you know something about that kind of behavior. Ditto yeah. your, your, your armored skeptic and his, his sleazy girlfriend. Um, uh, these people are bad. And they yeah. lie constantly. And one of the things they do is they have automated script and sock puppet accounts to do things like tweets and re-likes. Uh, so we can't assume all of his likes and, and retweets are, are legit. Um, yes. uh, there's a good chance he's got multiple socks. I'm pretty sure he does. He's got friends who do. Um, atheists run games like this. You've run into them just on YouTube, haven't you? Yes, yes. They come in like a clown car. I saw it called the cl Atheist Clown Car Brigade. They come in with their downvotes. <laughs> they're obviously organized. They come in with their comments, and they're all wrote comments and they'll be agreeing with each other and they'll be paying, playing psychological games on the theist um, and they'll often be talking to themselves because they run in packs and I know it because I've even been in chat rooms when I was doing men's rights stuff where some of them fucking admitted to this fucking behavior yeah. and they call themselves free thinkers for and the they call themselves free thinkers and advocates for free speech they have group think and they call themselves evidence based and they throw out evidence free proclamations like there is no god or there is no prophet so I mean, the only ones, maybe maybe not everyone has a rational belief. Most people could give some sort of justification for their beliefs. The only people who will refuse on principle to give any evidence for their beliefs is the atheist. Yes, the atheist thinks his godless universe concept is the default rational concept, despite yeah. a complete lack of evidence, scientific or otherwise, for that position. Um, so... Uh, and and yeah, you were right. People, you, you you make a really good point here, and one that bears uh, bears uh, 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 repeating. Let's say you have a simple-minded person who's not particularly well trained on theology, philosophy, or even science, but in their heart knows there's a God. Yes, and and, and he can't really articulate it very well for you. Is he wrong? Therefore. The answer is no, he's not wrong just because he can't articulate it well for you. Um, you need to seek out informed sources. And let me tell you, an informed source is not some idiot you know who's read the Bible real good. That's, that's not a source. I'm sorry. You need someone with some expertise, with some credentials. Um, so blah, 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 blah. So no, like, hmm? That's actually a, a big concern of Alan Plantinga is, is the kind of justified basic belief where you don't need to know, uh, uh, you know, scholastic arguments or whatever. It is a justified belief. 
until you are provided with some defeater. That well, that's you, right. That it can be called into question. But yes, that's right. As as Justin Barrett and other perfectly good researchers will tell you, a belief in God and the spiritual is normal in humans. Children develop it in a very early age. People are not born atheist. Sorry. Um, they have to be trained and indoctrinated into atheist, which is, by the way, what you are if you are caught up in Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris's bullshit. Uh, you're indoctrinated and you're part of a cult and you're repeating their talking points. Yes. Um, but OK, he says there's no prophet. He's assuming he means uh, Muhammad. And by the way, I think much more of men like Muhammad than a lot of atheists that I can name, even though I don't think he was a prophet. You're saying Jesus was no prophet. There were no prophecies there. You're saying, actually, I'll give you this. I mean, the, the ancient Romans had prophets too. And you know what? Some of them were accurate. You know, these were pagans. We, we have records of, 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 of successful prophecies going back, you know, outside the Christian tradition, going back a long way. And by the way, Carl and your friends, in case you didn't notice it, while simple fundamentalist so-called Bible-based Christians who are Bible thumpers may not uh, like hearing this, the truth is the Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, the Eastern Orthodox, and most Christians believe there's valid spirituality in other religions. They just do. Yeah. So if you, if, we hear that, uh, uh, if you hear that some pagan prophetess or something made an impressive, pro uh, uh, you know, had an impressive prophecy and it came true, that's not unusual. And that yeah. wouldn't shock us. And we wouldn't say, well, it must not have been spiritual or... No, we, we totally think that can happen. Most of us do. Anyway. That's the thing is, is that if you've ever had an atheist try to force you into their retarded worldview, where they ask you, oh, so I bet you think every other religion is fucking retarded, right? It's like, no, I don't think every other religion is fucking retarded. What is this comparative religion for morons, you know? Oh yeah, a lot of these people. I, I think Islam is. I, I think Islam and the and the and the faith systems of about eighty percent of the world are, are pretty close on the nose in, uh, well, in major respects. They're rooted in something a little more logical and a little more evidence based than 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 people like this are willing to even admit. In fact, just getting them to admit that it's a rational concept based on evidence, they lose their minds. Okay, so that's not agnosticism. That's not I don't know, and that's not lack of belief. That's firm resistance to evidence. That's firm denial of science. It's firm denial of other forms of evidence. Um, and I'm going to repeat again, by the way, uh, Carl, I dare you to read the New Atheist uh, Denial of History by Professor Borden Painter and review it. I dare you to do it. And then I dare you to look at me with a straight face and say there's anything credible about Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris. Ever again, ditto uh, Richard Carrier and Christopher Hitchens, uh, and if, oh, and Steven Pinker. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, okay. He says there is no afterlife. Now, in normal atheist land, Carl tells us there's no afterlife. In normal atheist land, they will uh, say, "Well, you can be an atheist and believe in an afterlife." And uh, I, I've heard that, right? I even had one creep named Justin Vakula try and tell me you can be an atheist and believe in reincarnation like yeah okay we know that in theory you can do that in practical reality how many such people are there that believe in that believe in an afterlife believe in reincarnation believe in nirvana believe in heaven or hell but don't believe there's a no ultimate grounding for existence and don't believe there are any ultimate principles moral or otherwise show me that person yeah uh, no yeah. Even, even the witches I've talked to have more common sense than that. Yeah. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, you know how I feel about this, but, but I mean, I, I, I will use the word atheist in the way atheists use the word atheist. And most atheists assume that, that an atheist is a philosophical uh, materialist. So that, that is the most natural thing I can reach for. But I acknowledge that, that by the dictionary definition, yes, one can believe in ghosts or life after death or whatever. And yeah. once, as long as one denies the existence of God. Now, let's, let's go back to this. There is no afterlife claim. And it is a claim. There is substantial evidence, scientific and otherwise, of an afterlife. So please explain to us, Carl Benjamin, a.k.a. Sargon of Akkad, or any of your other followers, why yep. you feel entitled to dismiss that evidence and why other people should dismiss it too. Tens of, tens of thousands of testimonies 
uh, uh, you, you have the burden of proof to say that they are all incorrect. So get that's to correct, and you have the burden of proof to claim that that these uh, just the near death experience research alone. You have the burden of proof to claim to any claim that it's just the effects, you know, the electrochemistry in your brain fizzling out, and so these amazingly detailed and incredible yeah. stories, um, which are easily, which are very credible. Sorry. Um, in many cases, not all, but many very credible. Go look at Jeff Long's research, Dr. Jeffrey Long's research, um, and the, on the Near Death Experience Research Foundation. It's it's very good data. Some of the stuff he's published is peer reviewed and has gotten through it just fine. The evidence is overwhelming for an afterlife, sir. The only question is who's got the right data on it. Yes. Um, uh, this. I said tens of thousands. I, I might, I might have been seriously lowballing there, but yeah. Yeah, the Endurf project classified four thousand plus. The last I had looked at it, um, but there's more that they haven't got. So it's yeah. almost certainly, and and actually, we have reports of people dying or appearing dead and then coming back and giving tales of an afterlife going back thousands of years. Yes. So we've always had these sorts of reports. And the philosophical materialist, naturalist, scientismist attempt to say that's just an illusion. I'm sorry. Please prove that extraordinary uh, claim. They have, they have prove it. Gaps, yeah. And prove why I and my experiences with the spiritual and other people I've talked to uh, with experience of the spiritual, why we're all just low IQ nuts and brainwashed. Go ahead. My, my own mother, my own mother had, had a near-death experience. Yes. Well, you know. And I'm curious to hear about it, but you know what was funny is is that I used to hang out a lot in men's rights circles, and I had a couple of I've had a couple of people who approached me quietly and were afraid to admit they believed in God and were willing to tell me stories. Of, of, I mean, I know one lady who's huge over at the Honey Badger Brigade. She'll get mad if she hears this, but I don't care. She's in the Honey Badger Brigade, and she won't tell people her story because she's afraid of the atheists and the skeptics. Yes. And that's fear, by the way. That's being bullied into science, so uh, into silence by by atheist nerds. So good job, honey badgers, um, uh, protecting nerds from bullies while you, you know, protect bullies and let yourself be bullied. Um, but anyway, um, there is substantial after evidence of the afterlife, Carl. And if you're an honest man, you'll ask to look at it, and you'll evaluate it, and you'll spend a week or two evaluating it. And you will not just go to your favorite atheist expert to tell you why he thinks you should wave it away. No, no, no. Have your own opinions. Have the guts. You or anybody else in your audience listening to this. Um, there is no salvation. Well, define salvation. What I usually find with atheists is they have the most batshit, stupid, religious fundamentalist view of what the word salvation means. Mm -hmm. So they probably think, okay, to the Christian mind... Uh, salvation is you believe in Jesus and accept him as your Lord. Therefore, you will go to heaven and you will have puppies and clouds and, uh, uh, or you will go to hell, in which case you'll be sitting there in fire, like in a blast furnace for eternity. And those are, those are the childish fundamentalist definitions and ideas of salvation of fundamentalist Christianity. Most Christians don't believe any of that shit. Sorry. I mean, a few will debate it. But the idea of heaven and hell is much more sophisticated. And if you want to yeah. talk to sophisticated people who are educated, thoughtful, and have a good handle on the evidence and the history and all that, try that. Don't just go to some, like Kirk Cameron with his banana stuff. Uh, did you ever see that? Kirk Cameron with the banana? <laughs> what I've noticed is, is that there, there, are, there are these uh, sort of cultural things that are much more important to atheists than they are to Christians. It's well, like yeah. Yeah, you 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 have you have a, a, a Ray Comfort and, and Kirk Cameron and like the uh, uh, the people with the toaster that bo that burned the image of Jesus. It's like the only people who remember that are atheists. Well, you know, you know yeah, I know. And the, the, just like atheists are the only one who believe atheists and stupid uh, Christians are stupid religious people are the only ones who believe in the God of the gaps. Yeah, they, um, they always go for the lowest hanging fruit. Well, they do. I remember I mentioned Kirk Cameron. From anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, some years ago, uh, atheists made uh, went nuts uh, making fun of Kirk Cameron because he's some kind of born again evangelical fundamentalist type, or at least he was. And he was making an argument against evolution and for God. And he he does this thing like the universe was made for us. Like, look at this banana, and he peels a banana, and it's like, see how God made this as a, a snack that. It's perfect to hold in your hand and that you could just peel back naturally like you bought it from a store. This is proof of God. I'm like, oh, my God. Really? <laughs> 
this is why you don't let stupid people talk about things like evolution. <laughs> it was ter It was embarrassing, okay? But that is holding all of Christianity to the standards of Ray Comfort, Ken Ham, and Kirk Cameron. Yeah. And the only thing I'd say there is, really? Okay, then go ahead and do that, and I'll treat every atheist like Stalin and uh, right. Mao and uh, 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 Steve Shives and yeah. uh, Sam Harris and just uh, just go from there. Um, no problem. I can, I can generalize just as well. Smart Christians always looked at that stuff and cringed. Yeah. But um, whatever. We're going back to the idea of salvation. Um, you know, really, uh, the, 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 the traditional Christian view of God is that you are trying your whole life to become a better and better person and more and more spiritual person and hope to eventually meet God in heaven or get closer to him. I mean, I, I am, again, simplifying, but uh, and, and in heaven is like an eternal place. You're not subject to the laws of time and space. You're, you know, it's, it's not that different from the idea of nirvana, except that some ideas of nirvana is that you cease to complete ex exist completely, and the Christian idea is that no, you don't cease to exist as an individual. Um, when you achieve heaven, nirvana, if you want to use a different word, um, and I'm sorry, there's evidence for that. So when you claim there isn't, you're lying. Now, yeah. if you want to admit that it's an opinion, okay. Um, but you know. How does he get to, uh, you know, how do these guys get to, to, to leap from that to we're the, we're the smart ones, we're the, we're the intelligence ones, we're the evidence-based ones? I'm sorry, you've made a claim here, sir, and yes. you're denying all evidence to the contrary. Please prove that extraordinary claim. Yes. Um, and finally, there is no excuse. I, I don't know what to do with there is no excuse. Ex oh, there for the terrorism? Is he yes. talking about the terrorism yes. again? It's going back to the, to the terror attacks. And there, okay, so there is no excuse. We agree. We are fully on board. There is no excuse for, for a terror attack. But this goes back. Uh, uh, I want to talk about this. Uh, new atheism has monopolized the religious conversation for the last 10 years. Yep. How has this alleviated uh, the threat of religious violence since you, have, since you have monopolized the culture for the last 10 years? Are we seeing less terror attacks these days? Oh yeah, no kidding. Yes. Oh, you've militized nerds. You you you've poisoned nerd culture so that all nerds are angry. Oh, how, God, has, yeah. how has new atheism benefited us? Yeah, what I mean tangible benefits of new atheism because yeah. religious violence has not decreased. They did a study in France. They said most of the most of the uh, French nationals who were recruited into ISIS came from atheistic uh, uh, homes. 90% of the ones who were recruited into ISIS came from atheistic homes. So uh, uh, this kind of monopoly of atheism doesn't really seem to be doing a whole lot to uh, 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 prevent Islamic terrorism. No, it's certainly not. And you know why? I'll go back to Justin Barrett's work and the work of other researchers, which shows most children, except for a certain subset, including a lot of autistics, sorry, yeah. Um, have a natural sense of the spiritual and a natural sense of the God. We're wired for it. We're born with it. The research confirms it. Yes. Which so Richard, means, hmm? Richard Dawkins and, and, and his acolytes have chop, are trying to chop out the middle so that anyone who follows the, their natural uh, uh, spiritual kind of compulsion is going to be pushed to the furthest extreme. Yeah, pretty much they will. Plus, um, atheists, let's face it, they're, they're making a big deal about how brave they are to attack Islam now. They spent 10 years attacking and shitting on Christians and yeah. getting the real Christian response, which was that Christians were nice to them and tried to persuade them and tried to be kind to them and tried to show you that, that Christianity wasn't what they thought. And all they did in response was shit on us more. Mm and uh, make up more lies about us. Again, I will refer to Borden Painter's book again if you want proof of lies. Um, but uh, in any case... Oh, right, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, right 10 minutes before this, I, I was responding to another uh, uh, internet meme where they were quoting Thomas Jefferson as saying that Christianity is the most perverted system. It's like, these people cannot stop fucking lying. Yeah, no, that, that that's not a belief. I'm sorry, I've read a lot of Thomas Jefferson. You're full of shit. Yeah. He, well, no, he well, did well, have he some nasty things to say about, about organized religion, and he was no fan of the Catholic Church, I will add. Yes. Although he was also supportive of some Catholics and even recommended Congress give some money to some Catholic missionaries headed out west. Um, so he was hardly that much of a hater. Yes. 
No, the, the, the quote was that it's, it's so misleading. It is, it is, it is so shameless. But he, uh, he said it is the most beautiful and most perverted, as in most corrupted. He's not saying Christianity itself. He's saying in its execution, it can be perverted. Which oh, well, We it, already know it has been many times. Yes. Christianity has been perverted many times, and Christians have often behaved badly. Yes. The main difference is we're the religion that tries to hold up to some identifiable standards, and we're usually the religion who will admit it Yes. When our leaders or even as individuals failed to meet those difficult standards. Yes. And we have a commandment that says thou shalt not kill. So if a Christian, if a person claims Christianity and kills in the name of Christianity, they're actually contravening our own law. That's correct. And what, they're, what, what I predict the responses to that will be is that someone will whip out some out of context quotes, usually from the Old Testament, but sometimes the New. Um, you know, recommending exit at death here and there and the other thing. Um, again, this is an intrinsically dishonest approach. It's even dishonest when you do it to the Muslims. Um, although, again, I'm no fan of the Quran, and I can yeah. tell you why I think there's a serious problem at the heart of Islam. Um, but still, uh, it's like uh, you can do that to the Quran too, because I've seen how they do it to the Bible. So it's like, uh, I'm sorry, context matters, how the actual believers interpret it matters, the history matters, the training matters, it all matters. And yeah. you, want to, uh, you want to know what Christians believe, you ask a smart, educated, and authoritative Christian, not your buddy with the Bible. That's what you do. And that's what I'd say to a Muslim, to anybody talking about Islam or Judaism or any of those. You can't yeah. just whip a verse or three out or whatever and say, oh, well, I'll give this context so the context I've given is right. No, you don't do that. Um, but or, or they can do it, but then uh, what I'm going to say is is that, uh, you know, escaping atheism and deflating atheism here, we're not the only, we're the start of something big. I am talking to Christians, Jews, Hindus, and others all over the place, including in Europe. I, I, British yeah. Christians, sick of atheist shit. Yeah. British Anglicans, as well as, as Catholics, sick of atheist shit. A Canadian... Christians and other religious, sick of atheist shit. Australians, sick of atheist shit. So one okay, of the things, you can stop now. <laughs> no, I am going to mention it because one of the things you'll notice, I know a lot of people in Europe will say, well, that's Americans. Yeah. You're just Americans yeah. and you're just, we're much more educated and sophisticated down here and down under or up here in Canada. No, you're not. You're just meaner to your, to your religious people and your religious people there are getting sick of your shit too. That's, that's my point there in those canters. In the English-speaking world, it's real common. I mean, one of my team members is from the Netherlands, uh, which is supposedly all atheists. And it's like, no, it's not. The Christians there are really sick of being treated like garbage, too. I, I, I was going to say, I, I mean, I, I think uh, uh, Scandinavia has kind of an, an outsized footprint in the, in the American liberal imagination. Yeah, it uh, does. Far beyond the reality of Scandinavia, yes. Yeah, they'll claim that it's largely, a, they'll, they've, they've even got some bogus stats that are flipping around saying 80% of the Swedes well, are, are, are atheists, and that's simply not so. It's, yeah, well, it'd be, uh, Phil Zuckerman is, is, I think, the guy you're referring to, but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's a Notre Dame atheist activist. And this, is, mm -hmm. this is the country, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a country, it has a very, it had until fairly recently a, a extremely homogenous population. It has, it has uh, the same number of people as South Carolina does. But this is the uh, great city on the hill for American liberals, you know? Yeah, it kind of is. And they're not seeing how Scandinavia is actually starting to fall apart. Um, yes. And it is going to continue falling apart because here's the thing. The science shows overwhelmingly that people need religion and that religion, uh, well, religion can be either rational or irrational. It depends on how you approach it. Um, but these young people are going to wind up turning Muslim or something else, yes. either that or they get into secular political ideologies like SJWism and, and things like that, you know, hard left uh, politics, or they get into to, to fringe libertarian politics. Yes. Um, but they all go into something and they all develop some kind of ideology um, and they go somewhere. Um, but yeah. most people are spiritual and most people, because it's a logical conclusion to believe that spiritual forces existed. It do exist. Yeah. As long as you're not one of those idiots who thinks it's like in Ghostbusters or in the series uh, Supernatural 
Although, for the record, I liked Supernatural, but I knew I was watching cartoons, okay? Yeah. I mean, Supernatural's a good show, but I know it's cartoons. <laughs> okay. You kind of lost me. You kind of lost Oh, the show Supernatural is fun, actually, and I can sort of recommend it to Christians. You've got to be the kind of Christian who has a bit of a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, it's, it's run like 10 seasons or so. Um, it's got Dean and Sam and... Uh, okay, here's the bottom line. It's a show that is just littered with demons and angels and talk about gods and uh, angels and spirit forces and demons are at war on earth in the show Spirit Supernatural. And it, it really is fun to watch, at least the first few seasons. I got bored after a while. It's fun because the actors who play the demons and angels are really good. And, and a lot of the dialogue is funny and a lot of things they say is funny. But it's still taking a real literalist approach to the scriptures and Christian traditions, you know. So the demons actually walk around like guys and buy drinks and yeah. smoke cigarettes and, you know, all, you know, spell casters are everywhere. And that's high fantasy. Actually, it's low fantasy. But um, uh, atheists act like, well, the, and that's what theology is and that's what, what, what Christianity is like. No. No, no, sorry. Our, uh, the educated members of the Christian community, as well as other religions, are way more sophisticated than that. Yeah. Uh, we just are. And all you have to do is ask somebody who's learned it. And actually ask, rather than act like, you are the arbiter of truth. In fact, uh, I don't know, we kind of used to be friends. I don't know if we still are. One of the guys I used to really promote and like is David uh, Spinosaurus Kin. He has this wonderful line. He used to be an atheist. I think he now goes by agnostic because I think he started doubting and he started noticing some of the behavior of the atheist community. I, I suspect so. But he has this wonderful line I use all the time. Arbiter of truth, tell me more. Yes, yes. So here we go. There is no God. Arbiter of truth, tell me more. What's your evidence? We got lots of evidence says you're wrong. Yes. There's no prophet. What's your evidence? Arbiter of truth, tell me more. There is no afterlife. Arbiter of truth, tell me more. Got any evidence there and why I should dismiss all the other evidence? There's no salvation. Arbiter of truth, tell me more. <laughs> Arbiter of truth, Carl Benjamin, tell us more, sir, about your yes. grand we, knowledge we of the agree. universe and how it works. On the moral point. We can agree with you on the moral point that there is no excuse for, for a terror attack. For the most part, no. I mean, you know, you can always go into, somebody will find some way to rationalize anything. Yes. And that's... By, that's the, way, a, by the way, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, if, if you want to believe that, that no atheist can ever commit... Hello? I just changed okay. my... Oh, okay. If you ever want to believe that an atheist can never uh, commit an act of terrorism, look at the turn-of-the-century propaganda of the deed, uh, uh, Parisian bombings done by anarchists. Look! Look at! Look at! You know Emma Goldman and and, and her squad. Uh, two wasn't American Gavrilo, right? wasn't Gavrilo Prince presidents were executed by atheists. That's not an accident, okay? No, especially not when they are talking exactly like Carl Benjamin does, and when they talk about science like Carl Benjamin does, when they talk about superstition and religion like Carl Benjamin does, he's talking exactly like a Stalinist. He's talking yeah. exactly like a Maoist. He's yeah. talking exactly like some of the biggest butchers who ever lived. And when we point out this un indisputable, indisputable empirical fact that he talks exactly like these mass murdering psychos, he'll say, well, there's no proof that that, that means, means I'm Stalin. No, but it pretty much means you'll, you, you'll say I'm silent. Wait, wait, wait. wait. We took a two-week vacation that the dungeon has ju has just piled up. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry I have. Plus, this guy, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he was uh, paid to put a hit on the people at Honey Badger Brigade and a voice for men. I'm pretty sure he was paid to do that, and some of his other friends were, too. Because yeah. um, that's that's how these people roll. And they, 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 they manufactured this lie, men's rights activists don't do anything, which, total lie. Actually, I helped get multiple people out of jail. I helped rescue kids from an abusive mother but hey whatever we don't do anything yeah. uh, it was a paid narrative i'm pretty sure it was certainly one spun they could put up together in their atheist chat rooms where they sit around all agreeing that atheism isn't an ideology and they aren't a club well <laughs> that, that's that's what strikes me about this whole thing is that they have gotten so comfortable and so intellectually lazy this whole tweet reminds me a lot of the kyle kalinsky video that we watch where he says Christian, you know, people who believe in God are wrong because what they believe isn't true. And it's like, is this, is this the logic you're using these days? 
you, you, you are so intellectually inert, you've completely lost any uh, concept of how to construct an argument. Or any you're humility. Just asserting that you're correct is an argument. No, back here, back here uh, on planet Earth, we realize you can't just assert that you are correct. That's the right. Only, the only people who seem to think that are atheists. Yeah, because they don't have to prove anything. Or and so, so he makes he makes a, a tweet like this, and and he's throwing it out there uh, to his peanut gallery. He's throwing it out there for likes and validation for other people who for other atheists who are looking for likes and validation, and just basically want their own prejudices uh, voiced back to them. You are the complete opposite of a skeptic. That's right. It, it is farcical. It is farcical that you call yourself a skeptic. You are the most credulous people on earth. That's right. If you if you if you if you smear enough uh, crap that you call science on it, yes. and you get an idiot, and he really is an idiot, like Richard Dawkins or Jerry Coyne or or Lawrence Krauss to say it with an air of authority, you'll just suck that up and believe it. You have no skepticism at all of your atheist heroes. None. You just, you, they just kind of pronounce things and you know, assume they're right. And we know now they lie. They lie about history. They lie about science too, but we can say definitively they lie about history. And they lie about history a lot. And no, it's not controversial. It's, it's documented. It's on you now to prove why you're not the liars. Um, again, read Borden Painter's book. Yeah. Um, we're running. We should probably wrap up in the next 10 minutes or so. But I, I was saying, huh? Go I ahead. just thought of something when we were starting this. Uh, uh, I know you know I, I'm not really uh, uh, all that familiar with a lot of the politics on YouTube. I think I think you know a lot of that stuff better than I do. Yeah, fair enough. You do. So, yeah, I probably do. Yeah. So this is like maybe a year ago, and and and, and uh, Sargon of Akkad first came to my attention. I, I honestly did not know a whole lot about him. So uh, I was like, I, I wonder what his religious views are. I could take an educated guess that he was probably an atheist. But uh, but yes, so I, I searched his Twitter feed for something referencing uh, uh, his atheism or, or God or whatever. And I didn't, I didn't find a whole lot uh, uh, saying that he was an atheist. What I did find is that he retweeted that study that was popular that says Christian children are, are, are more selfish and less empathetic. Where did where they get they got, this? Where they got a handful of kids and they found that the children of, of, of Christian parents were slightly, incrementally uh, uh, less willing to share their stickers. They gave them stickers and they asked them to share their stickers. And there was like a practically statistically insignificant uh, uh, deviant right. in, in a number of, of Christian children who were willing to share their stickers. So the people who published the study took this broad conclusion that Christians are less charitable than like Christian children. No, if you look at any study, it says Christians give more to charity. If you actually look, not this little bullshit study with, with, this, with this microscopic sample size and these little kids sharing their stickers, if you actually look at people who give to charity, you will find that Christians give much more to charity than do their secular uh, uh, counterparts. Oh, they if do. You look at, at the data. But no. So they, they take this study and they blame because they the people who do this these studies, like a lot of scientists, not to not to malign, they are looking for funding, they are looking for attention, they are looking for for a, a press, just like That's anyone right. does. That's right. So they know if they wrap this in this narrative in in, in a kind of a clickbait headline, Christians are less charitable. They know every single fucking atheist in the world is going to be clicking that those like and share button. That's right. That's right. So, um, so, uh, and our skeptic here, our, our rational evidence-based skeptic. That's you, Carl. Of God, love yeah. He just they, ate it up with a spoon. Yes. They will eat up anything that, that they are convinced is science. And by the way, if you produce peer reviews research that refutes their point of view, they will dismiss it. Yes. There's all kinds of peer review research that refutes most of their claims, and there's all the their historical claims are almost all debunked now. But uh, even even on the research, they'll just credulously accept it because they like the result. Yes. and there is such a thing as ideological atheist uh, uh, money. 
ideological atheists will fund studies. I remember Justin Bakula used to be pushing around this study claiming that prayer doesn't work because some atheist group, you know, had worked with a group of researchers to produce a meta study uh, saying prayer has no effect. And it was very limited and it had all kinds of flaws and problems, but ideological atheists were running and he's running around telling people there's was no God the and prayer Richard does nothing. I'm sorry. He, I don't know if Richard Dawkins always talks about where they actually found a, a negative correlation between prayer and 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 between yep. Tory prayer. Yeah, well, the fact that it's a negative correlation should already uh, uh, put up some. Uh, it right. should. That's all right. And plus, again, always, always doubt Richard Dawkins or anybody who's a self-declared expert a atheist if they start quoting science to you, because we know now they often lie about science. That's often in Borden Painter's book. We we can find it in other places. And this also points out something else that's huge. The, the, the new atheist thing was to convince everybody in part that you can only rely on peer-reviewed data from scientists. And the problem is that uh, this misses everything about what science really is. And it misses the reality that nobody wants to talk about. The last 10, 15 years, the scientific peer review system has melted it down. Yes, yes. It has. And it's full of ideological gibberish and shit that gets published just so the researchers can publish. And it means nothing. In fact, yeah. people have done analyses. Really good researchers have noted that li something like half of all studies published in multiple fields, including the hard sciences, less like 50 percent, they, the they cannot they reproduce the results. That's yeah. right. That's about a 50 percent rate before you've even read a scientific paper now. Yeah. Before you've even looked at it, knowing nothing else about it, it's a towing cost whether you can trust anything in it or not. 50-50. Uh, of the 50-50 that's maybe trustworthy, you then are left with, well, and are their conclusions and methods still, you know, you know, yeah. are their conclusions right? But but they're at least replicable and you can look at them. Half of them won't even have that. And yet you have people like Dr. Phil Mason out there, who, by the way, is you know, Thunderfoot, who, by the way, is basically qualified to be an associate professor or a junior college science yes. teacher, not much else. Um, not a bad guy, but still hardly a, a grand expert. It, it, it is truly amazing to me that they will. I know even after this video, they'll their followers will run to their atheist leaders to find out what the right answer is. Yes. And yet they'll still deny that there's any cult like activity here or any credulousness in atheist land. Yes. Um, but even you respect uh, Thunderfoot more than Richard Dawkins. Oh, I sure, I sure reflect, do respect Phil Mason a good deal more, uh, Dr. Mason. Uh, on the other hand, he, he's suffering from the atheist problem, which yeah. is that most atheists are, are wicked reductionists and, 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 and not inductive thinkers at all. And so they are very good at tearing things down. Yeah. And his, his problem is he's running out of things he can tear down. Well, he can't tear like anything. Huh? If you look at if you look at his videos on, on, on solar freaking roadways, they 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 are beautiful. And they are. He, he does a very good job of taking down solar freaking roadways. Yeah. When he goes up against religion, now it's a complete joke because he has no evidence. All he, all he can do is just repeat the mantra that there is no evidence for God. All he can Which do is, is talk. To un, all he can do is talk to uneducated fundamentalists. Yeah. And people who are incoherent. He hasn't got the balls to talk to somebody intelligent and learned and educated. He hasn't. None of these people do. Uh, I, I predict Carl will do his best not to respond to this video or just call names if he does. Yeah. And that'll say a lot about his followers. Now, we should probably start wrapping up in the next couple okay. minutes here. I, I, I do want to get on to the, I mean... I'm going to say this. I am an old nerd, and um, uh, that's why I was involved in Gamergate. That's why where I got to know Sargon and his cronies. Um, and uh, I was shocked at just how nasty and bullying and hateful the nerd community is now, especially toward religious commu yes. people. Yes. You know, I used to support something called the Honey Badger Brigade, Karen Strong, Girl Whites, what? No, I won't, because they've got a religious bigotry problem, and they enable nerd bullies and atheist bullies. Mm. And, and no, no religious man or his child will be safe under their advocacy. Um, and that's the real problem. You know, I was just talking to somebody who says, Sargon of Akkad, well, you were into men's and, men's and boys' issues. Shouldn't you support him? He's so good at attacking feminists. It's like, no, because all he does is attack feminists. Does he do anything to help address the problem with boys being over-medicated? Um, does he do anything to, do, to address the problem of the disparate family court system, the, 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 you know, to, to expose feminist lies on. There's all sorts of things 
he could do. But no, all he, all they know how to do is tear people down. And so when they yeah. run out of things to tear down, they just find random targets, or yeah. they turn on each other. It's just so noticeable. All right, so now I'm ranting, but um, yeah, I'm going to repeat the challenge. If you've got any balls, Carl Benjamin, you'll try backing up any one of those statements you made with evidence. And if you've really got any balls, you'll read Borden Painter's book and do a response video on it. Yes. I don't think you'll do either, but I'll invite any other atheist to do it too. Go on, Borden Painter, The New Atheist Denial of History. Read it, answer for it. Like to see you try. Okay, so I guess that's it. Anything else you want to talk about, Rob? I just want to say, Sargon, uh, uh, you are not a skeptic. Uh, uh, and these uh, 514 people who retweeted you, they are not skeptics. They're the most credulous people. They will like and share anything that, that confirms their own prejudices to them. You're all a bunch of clowns. Yep. That's and I'll just say, any Christian who reads this set of statements, there's no God, there's no alpha for life, blah, blah, blah. Um, this man hates you, and even if you agree with him uh, on the Muslim problem or whatever else is going on, in the end, this man thinks as low of you as he does of Muslims, or almost. I've even heard him talk about Catholics. He talks about Catholics like we're subhuman. And uh, no Christian should trust this man or anybody in his signal. Not befriend him, not give him money, not give him any credulity, not give his fans the time of day. Because he's a horrible, hateful, nasty bigot and a proudly ignorant man. As and, and no are his fans. Huh? <laughs> and no fans. Either, yes. One more time. I keep cutting you off. Boycott the candid app, too. Don't give them Boycott the candid. Yes. Oh, by the way, sir, Carl, you know more about what happened to uh, harmful opinions than, than you're letting on. And you know who else I think does? Probably the teal deer. All right. I'm going to leave all that out there. Um, we've said what we said. Looking for your evidence, atheists. And otherwise, we'll be back soon. Um, yes. God bless, everybody. Have a good day.